Hey there, Deep Inspiration Hub here. Today I'm coming to you with an updated video on how to set up the rivals our clients on a Linux based VPS. Now, a few weeks ago, I uploaded a tutorial on how you can install the our clients on a Linux based VPS, and currently this video has about 2k views, and I'm pretty happy that the video was quite helpful. Now, in the setup that we did, what we had to do first was to install Ubuntu desktop on the VPS client before we could install the our clients on this. Now, the rivals team have now provided a very, very good guide on how you can install this on Linux VPS without the need to install Ubuntu desktop and stuff like that. Now to recap a bit for those who did not watch the first video, Rivals is basically building an AI Intel layer powering an ecosystem of modular AI applications. Now there are basically two major things that are powering the Rivals ecosystem. The first one is called the R client and this is what I'm going to teach you today how to set this up. So basically the R client is a software that you can install on your computer or on a VPS server where you dedicate some of your compute resources to the Rivals ecosystem. So basically anyone can download this application and dedicate some resources that they have from their computing power to the Rivals network. Now the second layer of this is called the Z node or the validator nodes. Now these validator nodes basically take care of the inflows and the outflows of data within the rivals ecosystem basically maintaining the integrity of the network now talking about the z node there was an announcement made today by the rivals team that they are going to have a node sale for the z node if you want to purchase one of these nodes just stay tuned for the announcements that will be coming from the rivals team so here also i have some good news for you the node ops console would also be hosting some of the rivals node sales so when this is up i'm going to provide a link to all of you who would like to get into the sale to get some exclusive whitelist access. Now, what is asked most of the time is that why do you want to participate and set up this our client node? So currently they have this thing that is ongoing, which is called the Intel Incentivized Testnet. And what it basically means is that if you participate in this testnet, you're going to earn testnet points that can later provide you some portion of the rivals airdrop campaign that will take place in Q4 2024. Now, there are several ways that you can end these test points. One way is to, for instance, set up the rivals our clients, which I'll be taking you through today. There is a second approach that you can do this by basically engaging with the socials from the rivals network. And there is also a third way where you can basically be main mentioned data fragments and NFT. So I've tested out all these three and the fastest way to climb up the ladder board or to climb up these test net points is by setting up the our clients. So personally, I have a number of these clients that are running. So some of them, so currently it looks a bit more because I'm converting some from the old installation that I did to the new installation. And as you can see, I have currently accumulated 25,000 points and all these points would basically be converted at a point to airdrops when this airdrop campaign is live. Now to set up the our client, the first thing that we're gonna have to do is to sign up on the testnet dashboard. Now to do so, I'm going to provide my referral link here. And then if you sign up with my referral link, it would basically give me some referral points, which always goes to support my channel because then I can get some exclusive access to the whitelist sales and stuff like that to be able to continue providing some quality videos like you have now. Now, when you click on the referral link, basically it will bring you to this page and, and all you have to do is to connect your wallet. So here, just click on connect wallet. I'm going to select MetaMask and I'm going to log in into the account that I want to use for this testnet and I'm going to sign the transaction. Now, if you are doing this for the first time, the Rivals Network have their own blockchain. So if this is the first time that you are logging in, MetaMask would add, ask you to add a network that is called Rivals 2. And this is basically the network that is powering the Rivals Network. Now, if you do not have this, like I said, MetaMask is going to give you an option to add this network when you are signing in onto the page for the first time. Now, to set up the our client software, the minimum hardware requirements is 4 gigabyte of RAM, 4 CPU cores, 50 gigabyte of SSD space, and 1 megabyte per second of internet connection. So like I said, this tutorial that we're going to be doing today is going to be focusing on how to set this up on a VPS client. So I looked at the number of VPS provided out there and the cheapest option that I found was with Contabo. So Contabo has a number of packages that they offer and here I'll be extremely happy if you sign up with Contabo using my referral link because this would also give me some kickback to continue supporting my channel. And what we're going to be using for the rivals, our client setup is a Cloud VPS one. So this has four CPU cores, six gigabytes of RAM, 400 SSD, which will be more than sufficient to run the node. So all you have to do is to just click on the referral link that I'm going to put in the description section. This would basically bring you to this page here where you have to basically fill in the credentials for the VPS server and then we can set this up. But I'm going to take you through every step what you're going to have to do. So now here, 
what you have to just select is the duration with which you want to run your client so they offer from one month all the way to 12 months typically with the most vps providers out there the longer the subscription the cheaper the unit's monthly cost is going to be so here just choose whatever package that you want to go with so for instance if you go for the one month option this is going to be costing 4.5 euros a month now for the region leave this as european you know what it basically means is that most likely your server is going to be in germany but it has no effect on your arrow points or something like that your server is still going to work very very efficiently so latency is not going to be an issue if you choose any other location you're going to have to pay an extra cost which we do not need for the client that we want to set up now for the storage type just leave this as 400 ssd if you go for the 600 option you're going to have to pay 1.75 extra which we do not need you can also go with 100 gigabyte nvme but i do not think we need that high read write speed and that's why the 400 gigabyte ssd which is chosen by default and free is going to be more than sufficient for what we want to do now here for the operating system just leave this as a default which is ubuntu 20.04 and then here very very important you're going to have to put in password that you're going to use to connect to the vps server so make sure that you keep this password because without the password you would have to reset the vps server which we do not want to do so just put in the password here i'm just going to generate one password for instance and then basically continue with the next step now from step six to step eight you do not need to put in anything just leave everything as it is as a default click on next you can either create an account if you do not have an account with contabo or if you already have an account just log in with your login credentials make the payments and i'm going to take you through the next step so after you have placed the order for the vps after a few minutes or after a few hours you're going to receive an email from contabo which basically provides you the login credentials to the vps server so the email that you're going to receive is going to look like this mine is in german but the layout is technically going to be the same depending on which location that you are the most important information that we need is the ip address which will be provided here i have played this out obviously because i don't want people to try to attack me for the server type in your case it would most likely be vps1 ssd the location is going to be some location most likely in germany the username is always going to be root if you're setting up the vps with contabo and the password would be the password that you used when you were setting up the vps server and there are several ways that you can connect to the vps server i personally like to work with putty because i just like the interface there so if you want to use putty just come to putty.org click on download putty and then here basically download the right application depending on which operating system that you are using so after you download the application just install the putty application is basically a very straightforward application you do not need to change anything just go with the default and after that you can start a putty program now to connect to the vps what you're going to need is your ip address so here i'm just going to paste in my ip address here you can leave the port as 22 most of the cases 22 for most vps and then just click on open and then here if this is the first time that you're connecting to the console putty is going to warn you if you are sure you want to connect to this so i'm pretty sure that is the right console or that's the right vps i'm connecting to so here i'm just going to choose accept and then here you're going to have to log in with the credentials that you used when you were setting up the vps console or the vps server so the username like we saw in the email is always going to be root so just put in root and press enter and then here you're going to have to put in a password for the vps server the password is going to be the password that you used when you were setting up the vps server so when you put it whenever you're putting in a password you do not see this because it's in the password so basically it's putting in the password but you do not see this because it's a password so my tip is always that if you have a very complicated password just type the password somewhere copy it into the clipboard come into the putty console right click into the console so in putty whenever you do a right click it basically paste whatever that you have in the clipboard then press enter and then you see that we are now connected to the console now i want to show you a very very quick trick if you want to connect to the vps console and you do not want to use putty there is an application with windows that is called windows powershell so just click on the start menu search powershell windows powershell this is how the application looks and then here just type in ssh space roots at put in the ip address of your vps server so in my case it's 100.42.182.98 and then just press enter and then here it's going to ask you if you want to add the fingerprint because this is the first time that we are connecting to the vps server so just type in yes and then press enter and then here the same as we did in putty just put in your password so just right click to paste whatever that you have in the clipboard and then press enter and then you can see that just like we have with the putty application it looks basically the same so i personally like to work with putty a lot because it's a bit easier for me to manage several vps as i'm going to continue with the tutorial using putty so if you've been following my channel for some time now you realize that i always provide the commands that you're going to need when you are doing the vps setup guide this makes it a bit easy for you to put in the comments when you're setting this up so don't worry about typing this singly everything is going to be provided in the medium post that i'm going to put in the description section now the first thing that we're going to need 
to do is to update our Ubuntu operating system. So here, just come to step one. You can skip the VPS part because this is basically what everything that I did with you. So just copy this command here, come into the console, right click into the console. So like I said, with Putty, if you right click, it paste whatever that you have in the console and then just press enter. So now you see that the progress bar is basically going up. When it gets to 100, the installation is going to be completed and it's going to bring us back to the command prompt. So now this is done. So we're basically going to move on to step two. Now there are three applications that we're going to need to run the client. The first application is called curl. The second application is called node.js and the third application is called screen. So these we're going to install these three applications. Now the first one that we're going to install is this curl. I'm just going to copy the command here, come into the console, right click the command. I mean, right click into the console and then just press enter and this will install the curl application. The second application that we're going to need is called node.js. So here as well, just copy the command that we have here, come into the console, right click to paste the command then just press enter so these are pretty light applications so it should install pretty quickly so now it's done it's installing the node.js so it appears that the first time i copied the command it only copied the first one that's why i had to run the second one again but if you come if you copy the two you can basically run the two of them combined so now we're gonna have to verify that we have the right node.js version so if you come to the official guide you see that it said we need version 20.0.0 now to check to see if you have the right version just copy the command that we have here paste this into the console and just press enter and then you see here that I have version 20.115.1 so we are good to go now the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to install the screen app application come into the console paste in the command and just press enter so now screen is installed and what we're going to do is we're going to create a screen session that is called rivals so basically what a screen session is you can think about it as a set of space within which you can run an application so with screen it means that you can have for instance five independent screens that are running a screen running an independent application so here we're going to be creating a screen that is called rivals this is basically what this command here means so just paste in the command and press enter and you see that it clears everything because now we are in a new space that we are working now the next thing that we're going to do is the major thing is to install the our client application so here we're going to use this command here if you come to the official guide that's exactly the command that is also provided here it's basically the same command that we're going to use just come into the console right click paste in the command and press enter so here it takes a bit of time so do not worry if you see that it's stuck just give the console some time to process the installation and then we can continue with the next steps so if you start to see something like this it means that we are on the right track so you can see also i provided a sample image also in my guide so let's wait till everything is done if everything is done then we can start the application okay so this looks pretty good so you see that when the installation is done it basically brings you back to the command prompt now what we're going to run here is to run this command to start the application copy the command come into the console right click and then just press enter now here at this stage there are several things that we're going to need we're going to need a wallet address so that's going to be the wallet address that you use to sign up on the dashboard and then here you're going to put in the number of cpu calls that you want to allocate to the server or to the clients the amount of ram the text type and stuff like that i'm going to take you through everything so here i'm I'm just going to go to metamask and connect the copy the wallet address so here very important make sure that it's a wallet address that you used when you were signing up on the rivals dashboard i'm going to come into the console i'm going to right click that paste in the address and i'm just going to press enter and then here it's going to ask you how many cpu cores you want to dedicate to the client so if you remember for contable we had four cpu cores so i'm just going to put in four and i'm going to press enter and then the ram that we also had for our vps server was six gigabyte of ram so just put in six here and then press enter and then here it's going to ask you with text type that you want to use in our case we just have one dex type so we do not have to select the text type in the case where you had two or three then you would have to select which one that you want to use but if you're using my setup and you're using contable it's going to be one so you do not need to change anything here just press enter and then the same thing for the serial number you do not need to put in any serial number so when you see this prompt just press enter and then here very important it's going to ask you how much text space you want to allocate to the client so if you remember our clients had 400 gigabyte ssd i'm going to type in 400 here and I'm going to press enter and then basically if you see a screen like this it means that your node setup was successful now what we have to do now is to go into the client go into the dashboard and accept the validation this is very very important because if you do not validate the client you're not going to get a test net points so now I'm logged on into the client you see that currently it used to be eight 
slash eight. Now I have eight slash nine, which basically means that I have nine clients that are running out of these nine, only eight are validated. So I means that I have one that is not validated. And this is the one that we just set up on the VPS console. Now to validate, just click on validate clients to get points. And then here you see that I have one that is checked that is not validated. So to validate, just click on validate. And this would basically validate a client. You see that we got a confirmation that is validated. And here everything looks like validated, which is pretty good. Now there was a very, very important aspect that I want to cover with you. Please do not close the console yet. Before you close the console, press Control A on the keyboard and then press D. This command basically minimizes the screen session that you're running. The reason why I always advise that minimize the screen before you close the console is that, for instance, if by mistake you enter any wrong command, it could basically kill the application. So it happens to me several times that, for instance, I wanted to copy something somewhere. I press Control C and basically in, in Linux, Control C means terminate and it basically terminated the application. That's why I always suggest that before you leave the application, press Control A. So Control Control A on the keyboard, leave the keyboard and press D. This would basically minimize the application. If you want to restore the application, just type screen space minus LS. You would see the name of the screen. The name of our screen is called Rivals, right? So if you want to get back into the screen, just type screen space minus R space and then Rivals. This will bring you back into the application and see that we are back into the application. So now I'm going to do this again with you to so minimize the application, press control A, leave the keyboard and press D. This will basically minimize the session. At this point, you can close the putty application. So what is very, very important is a lot of people were asking, do you need to leave your PC on? Do you need to leave putty connected all the time? No. The idea of a VPS is that you are buying a hardware somewhere that you, you want to use. So you do not need to leave your PC on all the time. You only need your PC and putty when you want to connect to the server so i've set up myself my but i have set up my clients for more than one month and i never had to come into the console to do anything maybe there's going to be an update that we're going to have to come in there to update it later but so far i never had to change anything on the client end so at this point we can basically close the putty application and then choose okay here now what i also want to show you is one command that is also included in the official guide and this command is called the updates command so when you put in the command rivals updates you can basically update the information so for instance the number of cpu calls that you want to use the number of ram the number of disk space and stuff like that what this command wouldn't allow you to update is a wallet address so make sure that whatever wallet that you put in at the beginning is the right address because you can't change this later now, if there's a new version of the client that would be released, you can basically use this command here, Rivals Updates version, to update the client as well. So that's it for this video on how to install the R client on a Linux-based VPS. Should you have any difficulty or questions, you can put this in the comment section and I'll be very happy to help you out. Alternatively, you can also reach out to the Rivals team on Discord. The team there is quite helpful and they'll be able to guide you through any questions that you would have. Like the video if you're happy about the content. Subscribe to my channel to get more like this and see you in the next one. Bye.